Scatteractcoach.com. More nuclear density means more chops. A denser nucleus should be chopped into more small pieces. Let me show you this. Now, it doesn't look like too much nuclear density because the red reflex is so good. Remember, we adjust the microscope lighting to achieve that, plus I alter it here in post-production to really give you a better view. We'll make our main temporal incision here with a diamond keratome. This patient has a sufficient degree of nuclear density. This is about 3 to 4 plus nuclear density. So, incision looks good. I like the little bit of bleeding there at the limbus. That tells me that it's a good incision that's going to heal well in the long term. Now, with a denser lens, don't make a baby rexus. Do not make a 4 millimeter rexus. You know you like to do that sometimes because you get afraid. But have the courage, have the faith, make that 5 or even better, 5.5 millimeter capsule rexus. That's going to make it a lot easier to get these denser nuclear pieces out of the capsule bag. So there's that rexus. Looks fantastic. Let's get some hydro dissection. Now, you'll notice more of the nuclear density here with that hydro dissection. Fluid waves going around. And let's again make sure the nucleus spins. Remember, if it does not spin, you will not win. Hey, you knew it. Good. So there's the nucleus. Got some good density. A little bit more viscoelastic to protect that central endothelium. Let's get the phaco probe in here. So chop mode, high flow, high vacuum. So at least flow for me is 40 cc's a minute. Vacuum is going to be 4 to 500 millimeters of mercury. Infusion pressure of at least 80 millimeters. Buzz in there. Chopper goes around. Boom. There's the two halves. And you can see there's some density in this thing. So make sure I separate it out, bring the first half up. And now I won't just wolf it down, I'll chop off a small piece. Let's take that piece down. Beautiful, nice and easy. And now we'll buzz into that same quad uh, quadrant or hemineucleus actually. Buzz into it again and let's chop it again. Let's get another chop going. There's another chop. So we keep chopping off little pieces from it. And it's a lot easier and more forgiving to operate this way. Let's do another chop even. So that first half was chopped into four small pieces, each about 10 to 15% in size. So total is 50%, and we got about four pieces out of that. So now here comes the second half. Let's rotate that around, use the chopper, get into a more advantageous position, buzz in. And notice we don't buzz in the center, we buzz in the side of it just to break off a small little quadrant. Or even smaller than a quadrant. So when that small piece is broken off, it can be emulsified down. And then that last piece is going to follow pretty easily. You can either just wolf it down or chop it further. Here's a, a yet another chop just to make you guys happy. So again, a smaller uh, piece is a lot easier to aspirate here. So when you have a patient with more nuclear density, that means more chops. You saw the previous video we put just before this. I think it was video number 1108. In that video, we say... If it's moderate nuclear density, then just one single chop is all you need. But in this patient, where there's more nuclear density, you need multiple chops. So we have the initial chop to break it into two hemi-nuclear pieces. The first hemi-nuclear piece was broken up into four smaller sub-pieces. The second piece was broken up into maybe two or three small pieces. So a total there are six, seven, eight chops, which is very typical. So it's much easier to work with smaller pieces if you have a higher nuclear density. And we can still keep the total energy placed in the eye as very low. This patient is still going to have an absolutely clear cornea on post-op day one. So now we're just cleaning up there. Look at that empty caps or bag. Let's fill it up with our cohesive viscoelastic. We'll finish up this case. Again, this is another series of my complete cataract cases. And these complete cases are the entire case start to finish. And this is a pretty good looking case. And I encourage you, if you're just starting off, if you've done fewer than a thousand surgeries, you can achieve this. It's just hard work. If you want to achieve it, tell me, how hard do you want to work? So let's deliver that lens into the capsule bag. Looks pretty good. My technician's spectacular. She's loaded that up perfect every time. And now let's just get that lens into position, open up the habit. You can see this is a small hyperopic eye. This lens power is 24 and a half diopters for a planar outcome, and you can see that rexus looks great, overlaps the optic, but this is not a very large or big myopic eye. You can see that six millimeter lens, that optic diameter, six millimeters, that looks pretty big in this eye. So the total dilation there is about six millimeters. And again, our rexus there is about five to five and a half. We'll clean up that viscoelastic and at the end here, get that lens very nicely centered. And then cleaning up here, under surface of the anterior capsule room, just to get some of that lens uh, epithelial cell material off that area. 
That'll decrease the inflammatory load as well. If you inadvertently grab the hours like that, just let go. It'll be fine. So you can see the Purkinje images. You guys know this by now. What is that? The first and the fourth Purkinje image. And that big blurry stuff down there. What, that's another Purkinje image, right? Which one is that? If you don't know, you better look up Purkinje image on cataractcoach.com. So that looks great. Sealing up the incision the right way. Not causing a ton of astigmatism, which you don't want to do. Notice how we don't whiten the side walls of the incision like an amateur. We're not amateurs here. We're professionals. And now angle sweep there to wash out any viscoelastic. Looks great. Right. 